Good Good morning. It is very good to see everyone out this morning. So glad that you are here. I know that we have some that are visiting. In fact, my whole family decided to ditch me again. <laughs> my wife is with her father. Ashley and Cole are with his father. And the rest of my kids are somewhere else. So uh, I'm here all by myself, except with my church family. And I'm so glad that you are here to share this time with me. Um, as I was preparing this lesson today on Father's Day, I have to tell you, it's a little bit random. There's some random thoughts here that I had. Um, I know that not that long ago, it's been about two years now, this is my second Father's Day without my dad, uh, who passed away. And uh, last year it was more difficult than it is this year. And I know this, that I have quite a few people who I know who have just lost their fathers in the last few months. And I know that when that happens, it's very difficult once Father's Day comes around and other holidays start rolling around, you really, you miss them. And it's a hard, hard time. But I know that this, in my own life, it's gotten better. And I didn't cry so much <laughs> when I was thinking about this lesson that I have done in the past. So uh, my dad, and memories of him brings a smile to my face much more than the tears that I once had. So, really the message today is this. If you are a father, I hope and pray, no matter how old your children are, that you still enjoy them and laugh at them and spend time with them as you should. And if you're a child, I hope you still listen and honor your fathers and spend time with them. I found this uh, on the internet, and it's a story by Irma Bombeck. For those who know who she was, or she, I don't know if she's still around or not, but very funny. I remember reading some of her stuff, uh, Reader's Digest, in different places, and she's a very funny woman. And she wrote this about Father's Day, and I'm gonna read it. She says, I received a letter from a single mother who had raised a son, and that very son was about to become a father. Since he had no recollection, no recollection of his own father, her question to me was, what do I tell him a father does? When my dad died in my ninth year, I too was raised by my mother, giving rise to the same question. What do fathers do? As far as I could observe, they brought around the car when it rained so everyone else could stay dry. They always took the family pictures, which is why they were never in them. They carved turkeys on Thanksgiving, kept the car gassed up, weren't afraid to go into the basement, mowed the lawn, and tightened the clothesline to keep it from sagging. I know people here probably have a clothesline or had a clothesline. I never had that. We always had to wash it and dry it. So the clothesline one, that ain't me. <laughs> but some of you know that. And probably your father and your brother probably worked that one out. It wasn't until my husband and I had children that I was able to observe firsthand what a father contributed to a child's life. What did he do to deserve his children's respect? He rarely fed them, did anything about their sagging diapers, wiped their noses or fannies, played ball, or bonded with them under the hoods of their cars. What did he do? He threw them higher than his head until they were weak from laughter. He cast a deciding vote on the puppy debate. He listened more than he talked. He let them make mistakes. He showed them to fall from their first, he allowed them, excuse me, he allowed them to fall from their first two-wheeler without having a heart attack. He read a newspaper, this is not me, he read a newspaper while they were trying to parallel park a car for the first time in preparation for the driving test. I was not a good driving instructor for my kids. If I had to tell someone's son what a father really does that is important, it would be that he shows up for the job in good times and bad times. 
He's a man who is constantly being observed by his children. They learn from him how to handle adversity, anger, disappointment, and success. He won't laugh at their dreams. No matter how impossible they might seem. He will get out of bed at 1 a.m. when one of his children is out of gas. He will make unpopular, unpopular decisions and stand by them. When he is wrong and makes a mistake, he will admit it. He sets the tone for how family members treat one another, members of the opposite sex, and people who are different than they are. By example, he can instill a desire to give something back to the community. But mostly, a good father involves himself in his kids' lives. The more responsibility he has for a child, the harder it is to walk out of his life. What does that all mean? A father has the potential to be a powerful force in the life of a child. Grab it. Maybe you'll get a greeting card for your efforts. Maybe not. But it's steady work. Now, again, the message this morning is aimed at fathers. But it's also aimed at children. And you say children, you think of little kids. But if you're a child and your father is still around, no matter how old you are, please remember Continue to love them, remember them, call them, talk to them, and love them for as long as they are here. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9 says, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these, God will bring you judgment. Children, enjoy the time you have with your father. Fathers, do you create and provide joyous times filled with fun and laughter for your children? Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 5. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father. And give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother. He also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Children, do you listen to the wisdom and godly wisdom of your father? Fathers, do you teach children to listen, obey, and love God the Father with all that they have and all that they are? I mentioned this morning, out in the sign out there on the marquee, I put a, a Father's Day sign up there. And here's the reality. If you have a good father who took care of you, who disciplined you, who treated, the way, treated you the way a father should, you should be thankful. Not everyone has a father like that. There are some bad parents in this world. And I mean bad parents. People who should never have been a parent kind of people. I share the story that I share all the time. One of my first jobs was working at a preschool. And this little chubby kid, and he was chubby, he was so funny. He had his flat top haircut back then. I had a flat top. He made me laugh. And I remember one day I was coming at lunch. Got to go to, I was in college at the time. And I would come in at lunch and I would help pack the kids that sleep at nap time. And one of the female teachers noticed this mark on this kid's hand. It was a perfect circle. I didn't know what it was. I said, what is that? And she goes, that's a cigarette burn. 
his father had done that. And I just think, you know, I wonder what that kid, if he is still around today, what he thinks of Father's Day. So if you had a father who watched over you and loved you and took care of you, be thankful. If you had a godly father, and that's what my sign out front about godly fathers, I was growing up, my father was not godly. He was not a Christian. He never went to church with us. And yet he raised me right, even though he did not teach me about God or Christ. My mother did that. And the church did that. My father did not. Am I thankful for my father? You better believe I am. I still honor him, and I'm thankful for him. And what's even better is that later in his life, after I had been married and moved out, he did become a Christian. And that was the best news of all. So fathers who deserve to be honored should be honored. Now what does that mean? It doesn't mean taking them out to lunch on Father's Day. It doesn't mean buying them some gift on Father's Day. It means in your life, you honor them by who you are as a person. Who you are as a Christian. And I can tell you this right now. If you honor God the Father with your life, you will bring honor to your earthly father. So that is the most important thing you can do, is to honor the Father of all. And that's God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Fathers, when you are around your children, do your actions and words used in front of your children show that you are a follower of God? God the Father and His Son, Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 14 through 17. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you, for you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ Yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore I urge you, imitate me. For this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. What is Paul telling us? Well, I see two things there. First of all, you don't need children to be a father or pay that part. Paul here was being a father to Timothy, who is not his earthly child. It's his brother in Christ. And he looked over him and taught him and, and worked with him. But here's what he says. He says, imitate me. Fathers. Would you have your children imitate you in who you are, the way you act, the way you conduct your life, and most importantly, in the way you love Jesus? Would you want your children to imitate you in that? And I hope and pray your answer is a resounding yes. I love Jesus. He is my Savior. My children know that through not only my discussions, but through my actions. That, as a father, is one of the most important things that you can do and should do. Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 and I put down 16a, the beginning of 16. And here's what it says. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me through His grace to reveal His Son in me. To reveal His Son, that is Jesus, in me, in my life. I reveal Jesus Christ in my life to those around me including my wife, 
and my children. And not only my wife and my children, but my children's friends. They know me to be a person who follows Christ and is godly. Fathers out there, is that you? Would God have you revealed His Son in your life because of who you are as a Christian and as a father? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Now, this idea of provoking it denotes exasperation produced by arbitrary, harsh, or unsympathetic rule. Some fathers are like that. I don't know if you've had any friends or observed this in your life, but I have, being around some friends when I was younger, whose father, I didn't believe, treat them the way he should have treated them. He didn't abuse them. But he's pretty arbitrary the way he did certain things. And when he was acting like that, and I was thinking, I'm glad that's not my dad. I'm glad I have the father that God has blessed me with. Not everyone has a father like that again. And then it says, and bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. That, again, is the most important thing a father can do. Colossians chapter 3, 20 and 21. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Do you encourage your children? Hebrews 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Again, two parts there. Fathers who corrected us. The Bible talks about discipline. And I don't know too many people who say, I love being corrected. I love being disciplined. Um, when I was a kid growing up, I think I shared the story before, that... My mom used to discipline us because she was around us more. My dad went off to work. My mom was a homemaker and a mother at home. And we did something wrong. She would discipline us. Well, as we grew older and mom tried to whack us, it didn't hurt very much. So we got to the point where we kind of laughed at mom. Remember one time my brother said, go ahead, mom. <laughs> and she got really upset about that when he said that. I had two brothers. I remember one time, my mom got so mad at me, she said, go in, your, in our room, my mom and dad's room, and you wait till your dad gets home. I'm doomed. <laughs> my father was the one we respected when it came to that. My mom, when we were a little younger, but not when we were so much older. We respected her, but we knew that if she tried to whack this one, it wasn't going to hurt us very much compared to my dad. So he became the primary disciplinarian as we got older. In one words, the words we never wanted to hear was, go to my room and wait for your dad to get home. That was bad news. <laughs> so my dad did do that. And here's the thing about my father. He provided joy and laughter for us. He spent time with us. Uh, he was 6'4", uh, about 225 when we were younger. Sitting up on his shoulders, he would feel like the king of the world <laughs> being up there. And he was the one throwing us high in the air. And when we got older, uh, he kind of took a step back and allowed us, as I had read, to make mistakes, uh, to learn by doing. And he would give us sound advice. Uh, if we went to him, he would give it to us, which I thought was one of the greatest things he did. And he never complained about being a dad, no matter how bad it was. 
First John chapter 2, verse 13. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him, him being Christ, who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. So here's the questions as I finish this morning. Fathers, how well do you know Jesus? Fathers, how much of Jesus do your children see in your life? How well do you show Jesus? Fathers, in your discipline of your children, in your correcting, in your teaching them lessons, in your fun, in your everyday activities, in your anger, in your peace, in your patience, in your kindness, and your self-control, do your children see Jesus in your life? and in your relationships with them and with others. Fathers, how well do you live Jesus? Because if the answer is, I live Jesus, then your children will see this, and they are likely to honor you in their lives because they will also honor God the Father. Children, do you show the respect and honor that they, that person in your life that has this role in your life, deserve? That father figure. Again, I knew this man many years ago. His name was Ed. And Ed had, I think, six or seven kids of his own. And the bottom line is that he was, at the school that I taught, he would come around quite a bit. Everyone knew who he was. <clears throat> And at the end of the school year, we had something called the father-daughter banquet. Now, some schools have a father-daughter dance. We had a banquet at our school. And often, he would find one of the daughters who didn't have a father. And he would escort them to the father-daughter banquet so they could go. And when I got teaching and older and Ed was gone, he had left and moved to Arkansas, I decided to follow in his steps and tried that a few times. My daughter didn't quite understand that when, <laughs> when they were young. You're our dad, not their dad. But I tried to explain to them that this kid didn't have a father and it would be nice for them to be able to go to that banquet. Here's the thing. As you sit here this morning, the memories you have of your father, whether they are great memories, good memories, average memories, or maybe bad memories, in our lives, we should be honoring God the Father, bringing glory to His name. And that way, He will be proud of you. Bless your life for living that life for him. And for sure, if you're honoring God the Father, you will bring honor to your own earthly father as well. This morning, as you sit here, if you have not <coughs> accepted Jesus, you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, make it today. I can tell you right now, I was no more happier and proud of my kids on the day that they became Christians and were baptized. It just, it made, it was one of the greatest memories that I've ever had, was when that happened. It was even greater than the day they were born. Because that was that important to me, that they became Christians, that obeyed the gospel. So if you've not done that yet, don't do it for your father. Do it because you need to do that for your own life. If you have strayed away from God the Father in your life, it's time to come home. It's time to come back. Father wants you to come home. And if you need that, now's the time. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Whatever your need is, come now as we stand and sing.